Hey everyone, and welcome to part two of Basic Encryption. And this time we're going to look at, yeah, that's right, you guessed it, Microsoft Windows. But um, the chances are that if you're watching this video, there's a very good chance that you're running uh, some form of Microsoft Windows. Probably Windows 7, maybe Windows 8, or maybe, as you see in front of you right here, Windows 10. This is, just as I did in part one for the Mac, this is a stock install of Microsoft Windows 10. No bells, no whistles, no other added software installed. This is just the basic installation of Windows 10. And what we're going to do is we're going to install the Windows version of GPG, which is the open source version of PGP, which stands for Pretty Good Privacy. Um, we're going to go down to the Edge browser right here, and I'm going to go ahead first off and show you a little bit about GPG. So we'll go, we'll type in GPG, and we'll do a search, and there it is. GNU Privacy Guard, the official site. This website contains um, a whole wealth of information in regard to GPG, PGP, how to encrypt, um, what encryption is, how it works. There's an FAQ on here, a ton of information if you have the time and or the inclination to sit through and read it all. Um, it also has uh, the downloads uh, for pretty much, wow, uh, any operating system you can imagine. There's going to be something in here where you can download and install some kind of uh, PGP software. Uh, but this week... We're going to look at Windows. Now, for Windows, you're going to need this. GPG for Win is a website that uh, distributes the Windows version of GPG. So I'm going to go there right now, shoot over to GPG for Win. As you can see, we have this wonderful website here, decidedly retro in its look, I guess. Uh, but it works, and that's the main thing. So I'm going to go ahead and download GPG for window, Windows. I'm going to download the latest version. The latest version was released on uh, November 25th, 2015, and it's version 2.3.0. So let me just go ahead and get this going right now. A few moments later. Okay, so we've now finished the, uh, the download for GPG for Windows. I'm going to go ahead and minimize this, and we're going to go into Windows Explorer. And go down to downloads, and here we have GPG for Win executable. So, uh, for Windows user out there, you probably already know this. In fact, it's highly likely that you know this. Install an application. What do you do? What do you do? Come on, come on. Yes, 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 yes. Well, you double click, and here we go. Look at this. Do you want to? Do you want to allow this application to make changes to your PC? Um. Let me think about that for a second. Yes, we do, of course. There you go. So we want it in English. And we'll click next here. Blah, blah, blah. Next, next, next. Now, here we have something very similar. Let me just close this window right here. Here we have something that was like this on the Mac. It gives you options on what to install. So you have the main GPG. You cannot uncheck that. That is the main application. Uh, Cleopatra, the key manager. Well, we need to install that. Uh, privacy system won't worry about that. Uh, GPG for Outlook. Are you running an Outlook client on your Windows machine? Did you want to decrypt and encrypt on the fly? No? Okay, we'll uncheck that. Uh, and we have the shell extension so you can uh, use GPG in the command line. We'll leave that. And then we have the documentation. We'll leave that also. Let me click next. Destination path. Next. Start menu. I want to put an icon on the desktop also. Next and install and there we go now GPG is installing onto this Windows uh, PC and it's installing pretty quickly now it's sped up after that initial pause and we're almost there. Oh, look, we got some desktop icons. Click next. Uh, no, I don't want to see the README finish. And there you go. GPG is now 
installed. Now, if you'd watched uh, part one, which was the Macintosh version, you know what comes next, and that's the creation of your public and private PGP key. And you need a public and private key in order to send and receive encrypted messages or to encrypt and decrypt files locally on your PC. So we're going to use Cleopatra here. This is the, the key management software. So we'll double click on that. Okay, so we've opened up Cleopatra and we want to go ahead and create a new public and private key. So we want to go to new certificate and we want to create a personal open PGP key pair. So we'll highlight that name. Well, as I was Captain Kirk in the other one, I have to be. Yeah, you guessed it. Mr. Spock. And my email is going to be <laughs> we'll click next right there. There we go, Mr. Spock, Mr. Spock. Everybody, so now we want to create the key. And my passphrase. There we go. Now this is very similar to what we had earlier. It's going to warn you that you've entered an insecure passphrase, but that's fine. We're just testing here. And we're going to use this one. We're going to re-enter it. Can you guess what my password is? The password is password. Click OK. And there we go. We now have created a successful key. Key pair, rather. I want to finish that. And here we have, we can change the, we can put an expiration date on it so that after a certain amount of time, uh, the key will expire and force you to um, uh, create a new one and so on. Okay, so now we want to encrypt a document or some kind of file on the computer. So to do that, we're going to need uh, your notepad because I'm going to use a text document. So I think with Cortana, I can kind of search for notepad. There we go, notepad. And I'm going to write some text in here. Test, test. Oop, if I can type. Test. And then I'm going to go ahead and save that. I'm going to save it to, to the desktop as test. So, and there it is. There's my test document right here. So I'll close that. Double click. Test. Okay, there's my test document. Now, I want to encrypt this document so that only I would be able to view it. So I'm going to use my encryption key that I just created to encrypt this document. Now, the way this works is that if somebody else sent me their encryption key, um, I would use their key to encrypt this so I could send it to them, meaning that then only they could decrypt the file. Not even I could. I could, en I could encrypt the file, but I couldn't decrypt it because I'm using their key. So in this case, I'm going to use my key. So I'm going to right-click, go down to More PGPX uh, Options, and I'm going to use Encrypt. So I'm going to choose Encryption. And this gives you some idea of what you can do with the file. Uh, you can sign it, encrypt it. I'm just going to plainly encrypt it right here. I'll click next. I'm going to choose the Mr. Spock key. I'm going to add that. I'm going to click encrypt. Finish. And there you have it. Now I have an extra encryption. So here we go. This has been encrypted. So here I have my standard decrypted uh, version of the text. And here I have the encrypted version. As you can see, one is easily readable, the other one looks like nonsense. So, I'm going to go ahead and delete the original. So now I just have the encrypted version. So now I want to decrypt it, so I want to view the content. So I'll right-click, I'll go to uh, uh, more G GPGX uh, options and go to Decrypt. And now uh, it's going to ask me to decrypt and verify. I'm going to click decrypt and verify. It's going to ask me my password. And in my password, decryption successful, OK. And here it is again. Now here's the decrypted file. And that pretty much does it. Um, this gives you some idea of how PGP works on Windows. 
Uh, and I hope this uh, this helps you out and that you start encrypting. Uh, in part three of this series, I'm going to get into uh, sending encrypted emails to uh, to other recipients. So you can exchange keys and then send an email and decrypt it that way. But I'm not going to use the, uh, the, the plugins for Outlook or for Apple Mail or whatever the case may be. I'm just going to do it straight in PGP itself. Okay, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoy it. Please leave me some comments if you enjoy this and subscribe to the channel. And uh, I'll talk to you all again very soon in part three of Basic Encryption. Thank you.